This is Chris Wade with the South Carolina Public Safety Chaplains Association. Today we're getting to know some of the chaplains in our state and are with Chaplain Scarlett Boston. Scarlett, um, what public safety chaplain agency do you work with and how long have you been there? Well, actually, I don't work with an actual agency. You know, I don't work with the, uh, I'm not on staff with anyone, so I don't work with the fire department or the police department. I am a support person for them. So um, my background is in a clinical pastoral uh, uh, chaplaincy, but um, I'm just there basically to, <clears throat> as a volunteer, to support uh, all the first responders. And so, uh, you know, since there was 911, uh, the tragedy of 911, though, the Department of Homeland Security, they do consider um, that. Um, that uh, the first responders and any of the uh, the public service agencies are considered that it also encompasses hospitals and transportation and, and all of the agencies that would help in a critical incident. Mm -hmm. So in that capacity, I guess you could say that having been a hospital chaplain for nine years, that I have in an essence worked in the public safety arena. Okay, but now you're with Coastal Crisis Chaplaincy. I'm with Coastal Crisis Chaplaincy, and, and although we're not a public safety agency, we are um, we are there to support them in every way. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess Coastal Crisis, I, when I go to a scene, I go there to volunteer as a chaplain to support the firefighters and the policemen and the coroners and all first responders to try to be there for, to help them to be have a healthy mind and a body and a healthy spirit. Mm -hmm. I want them to know that someone is there for them to support them in all the stressors that they see and that they're involved with. Because that takes a real toll on people over time mm -hmm. uh, if they see these sorts of tragedies every day of their lives. And so I want them to know that I'm there to support them, to help them through in any way that I can. Okay, so Coastal Crisis Chaplaincy is a heritage organization. Um, what do you like about being with Coastal Crisis Chaplaincy? Well, I like a lot of things about it. Uh, some of the things that I like is that I enjoy that the grace that they uh, provide for their volunteers. You know, they know that we're we're volunteering our time and our energy and our spiritual wholeness and to share with others. And so. Uh, Coastal Crisis Chaplaincy is very gracious to their volunteers. They help us uh, in any way that they can so that we might be able to better help the, the first responders. Mm -hmm. I do. I like that very much. I especially like the uh, ability that I have. Um, well, all of us, I shouldn't say just I, but all of we chaplains have the ability to go in and um, to... Um, to go in and recognize that God's children are in crisis. I'm a particularly a crisis chaplain. So every individual, in my opinion, has been created by God. And because they were created by God, they have great, great value. God loves them mm -hmm. very much. Yes. I mean, each person uh, is, is a child of God, in my opinion, no matter what religion or what culture they come from. Uh, and I, I love being able to work with Coastal Crisis Chaplaincy to be able to be there with all of God's children. I like to serve them in any way I can to be there for them. And that makes me happy. And I wouldn't have a chance to do that if I weren't uh, working with Coastal Crisis Chaplaincy. Okay, great. Um, what was your faith tradition growing up? Well, I was reared as a primitive Baptist Primitive Baptist. Primitive Baptist. And so, you know, they're uh, what some people call foot-washing Baptist. Okay. Yeah, so I, I was well-versed in that. I was baptized in the church at age nine and, and, and learned all, my, all of my Bible verses, just like all the other good Primitive Baptist kids did. Uh, we had very little music and that sort of thing in the, in the church. But um, I found a great foundation there. I really did in a scriptural knowledge. You know, like uh -huh. I said, we had to memorize a lot of the scriptures. Okay. Uh, but as I became an adult, I began to realize that some of my theological ideas and concepts were not completely in line with the uh, primitive Baptist church. 
And so I chose to uh, join. I searched churches all over, uh, Christian churches. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I finally settled with the Presbyterian Church USA. Okay. Uh, they were the most uh, aligned with my theological way of thinking. Okay. Um, and of course, I don't think any humans alive that, that their church that they go to, they believe everything that they believe 100%. I don't think that happens. Uh -huh. um, but the PCUSA is most aligned with my own theological thinking. Okay. So tell me about your family. Oh, gosh, I have a huge family okay. that God has blessed me with. I'm married to Bob, and I've been married to him the 25 years in September. Congratulations. So we're trying to decide where we want to go for our silver wedding anniversary. And Bob's answer is always, well, what can we afford? <laughs> Illogical, yeah, very logical. <laughs> That's the way the man thinks. <laughs> so, uh, so we're a blended family, and we have three sons. Um, David is actually an assistant fire chief in Centerville, Georgia. Okay. We have Joseph is the middle uh, of our three sons blended together. And Joseph is a, a master Honda technician. Uh, he is, uh, we're really proud to say, have bragging rights about Joseph, that he was the top tech in South Carolina. And he is um, in the nation. He went to the nationals and he was in the top 10 of the nationals. And Brandon is our, our youngest son. And he uh, is a real estate agent, and we're very proud of him. He also has a master's degree in education and was a teacher for almost, I think, about 15 years. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, and we have 10 grandchildren. I shouldn't forget. <laughs> you can't forget about the grandchildren. And they range from age 6 to age 25. And uh, one of them, our eldest granddaughter, is an EMT. Oh, okay. Working on her paramedics. Good, mm -hmm. good. Um, so are you involved in any other ministries? You know, I am. Uh, a lot of people would not consider it. So uh, I sing in the choir at church. Okay. You know, and. Um, Which church is this? Uh, PCUSA. It's Palmetto Presbyterian Church. Okay. It's out in Carolina Park in Mount Pleasant. Um, so y'all come. Anybody that hears this, more than welcome to come on out. Um, I love singing in the choir because to me, uh, the choir is a worshipful moment. And. A lot of times people get hung up in the melody of the music we sing, and that might give them a moment to stop and reflect and be quiet, just be, uh, and reflect and commune with God. Other people hear more the words, and the words is actually a wor worshipful moment. So I believe that we come before God in singing and in praise to him. And so and to me, that is a ministry. And there are several people within my community uh, that completely unsolicited, but they know I'm a chaplain, and they come to me for pastoral care. So that is a ministry as, as well. Mm -hmm. But at present, I am uh, not on staff anywhere. <laughs> okay. So, so what got you into chaplaincy? Oh, gosh. Well, that would be a really long story. Um, well, we don't have that long. I so. know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but all of my life, I've tended to God's people. Even in my early 20s, I used to um, go in a place called the Elizabeth Inn in Marietta, Georgia. It's a homeless shelter. So I worked with the homeless there. Um, we fed them. We washed their clothes. We packed their lunches for the next day. And we fed them breakfast the next morning before they left. And so mm -hmm. we've, I've always tended to God's children, or at least tried to do my very best. And then I did the same thing in Shinjuku, Japan. I lived there for five years. And my husband and I fed the homeless there as well. And in, in seminary is where I first got my taste of actual chaplaincy. Uh, and that was at the Atlanta Medical Center in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, in the trauma center. Okay. So I, I love that. So you see, it's been a progression throughout my life. Mm -hmm. Then uh, in, after, uh, in my last year of seminary, I did uh, go and commit myself to being a uh, chaplain and took the, all the training that was necessary to do so. But in my heart, I believe that God has called me to be a chaplain. I was ordained to the pulpit and spent two years at Livonia Presbyterian Church as their, their minister. But actually, my heart was in chaplaincy okay. to tend to, to God's people. And you know what? I just respect all people of faith. And I think that's really one of the most important things that a chaplain has to realize 
is that we all come to God in a different way. Mm -hmm. But God loves us all, one and all. Do you have any background in public safety beyond chaplaincy? Uh, no, not really. Um, not really. I don't remember. That's okay. Yeah, I guess. I guess you know, not you know, not really. No. Okay. Um, what do you love about being a chaplain? Gosh, I just love uh, knowing that every person comes to to grief or crises in a different way, and I love the part where being a chaplain, where I can, you know, when I go. Well, what I love, I guess, the best is about being a chaplain is just knowing that I have to intuit so many things. And I, I must go before every person with the thought in my mind that the power of the Holy Spirit has to go before me. And so anything that I say or anything that I do is going to be hopefully done to the glory of God. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be able to walk with that person uh, through their crises or be there for the first responders. Uh, and try to keep people away so the first responders can do their work. Yes. So I love all of that. You know, that's really what I like about being a chaplain. Okay. So if you were asked by someone who felt called into chaplain ministry, mm -hmm. how would you direct them? Oh, gosh. Well, I think that training is paramount. You know, we, uh, I am a professional chaplain through the Association of Professional Chaplains. And so I took all the required um, training for that. I did the CPE, which is clinical pastoral education. I did uh, 2,000 hours of cl with clinical uh, practical training and then, you know, went before a verbal review board and a, and a written review board. Uh, and I think that's important for all people and for the public safety arena, especially, um, I think that they really, you know, just need to be trained. That's mm -hmm. uh I've seen a lot of preachers that say, that have come up to me and said, chaplain, I'd really like to be a chaplain. Where do I go and make application for that? You know, and I'm like, well, what kind of training have you had as a chaplain? Well, I, I come and visit people at the hospital every, every day, every week. I'm here visiting people. And I said, well, you know, there's a lot of difference uh, in being a chaplain and being a preacher. When I'm in the pulpit, I'm going to be trying to bring you to Jesus. But when I'm a chaplain, I'm going to be more of an envoy of Jesus and try to be where you are. Mm -hmm. So I would ask anyone that's wanting to become a chaplain to really consider uh, why they want to be a chaplain and what they think a chaplain does and then set out to get the proper training so they can, you know, they can glorify God and not themselves. Mm -hmm. So last question here. Um, what desires do you have about being a chaplain and where do you want to go with this, your ministry? Oh, gosh. Well, I think that my desire is to truly glorify God um, in ministry. That's my only desire. You see, I'm not a young woman. I'm not building a career. I'm already where I want to be. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had a wonderful career. God has blessed me beyond what I deserve. Absolutely. And so I think that my desire is just to keep on doing what I'm doing now to learn all I can possibly learn as I go forward. And uh, I'm going to pray about that. And I'm going to do my very best to be quiet and listen and try to hear what it is that God wants me to do. Okay, sounds great. Well, thank you, Scarlett, um, for taking the time. And thank you for letting everybody get to know you a little oh, better. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Chris.